Hi, this is Adam from Wax Pack Guys. I hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to work a crossword puzzle that I built on a website called um, crosswordlabs.com a while back. So it's been long enough, a few months now, that I think it won't be just a walk in the park for me, but it, I, I do expect I'll be able to get through without a whole lot of problems. But um, if you would like to work the puzzle first, you know, before seeing the answers that I, I put out here on the video, um, I will go ahead and link to the PDF version or online and PDF versions of the puzzle on waxpackguys.com down in the description. But without further ado then, let's join my baseball card friends here that are keeping me company and get down to the puzzle at hand. I'm armed with my uh, pink dinosaur pencil and ready to roll. Okay. Two across, SSPC. So if you're a longtime collector, you probably probably remember SSPC. Uh, they issued cards in 19, well, they had a 1975 copyright. Um, I think they actually came out in 1976. They had big uh, pure photos and white borders. I think they had a facsimile autograph. The pure was key. The nickname was always the pure card. So that one is going to be pure card. Pretty confident of that. All right. We'll just go side to side since to uh, conserve some real estate here. Billy Ripken faux pas. So in 1989 Fleer, Ripken had uh, profanity on his bat, written on the, the bat knob. It was blank face and became known as F face in politer circles of the hobby so we'll stick with the polite version okay a rite of spring before 1974 so before 1974 baseball cards were issued in series rather than all at once so this must have something to do with series so could it be like series one s-e-r-i-e s oh it could be series one I'm not sure what else plays into that. Let's let's go on and see if we can uh, figure out, get some more clues to that one. So I've got, stumped myself a little bit already here. Flipped Dale Murphy. So uh, Upper Deck flipped the negative on Dale Murphy's 1989 card. And I, I think it was the proof card. Could have been the, the actual issued card, but I'm not sure about that. Anyway, it's Upper Deck. I believe I could be wrong on this one, but I think there was a corrected version. I'm just not sure about that one. Okay, seven across, broke tops monopoly. That would be Fleer, who filed their antitrust lawsuit in 1975 and won the thing for a dollar settlement, or for a dollar in 1980. But they also got the right to produce baseball cards, and that was the key for all of us, I think. Okay, me and you and all the rest. What are we, collectors? C-O-L-L-E-C-T-O-R-S. I think that would fit. Let's see what else we can come up with here. Because I'm not sure about six across still. Famous 1981 error. So we had Greg Nettles with kind of the funny spelling of Greg. And it caught Fleer. And they said, this is Craig Nettles. It was a, an error card that became known as C. Nettles. If you say that to any old time collector, he's going to know exactly what you're talking about. The dog ate my baseball cards. So something about baseball cards and dogs. Dog food, maybe? Yeah, dog food. So in the 50s, Red Heart dog food issued or sold baseball cards with their dog food. So I'm going with that. Eight down, not original. Mm. Fake, reprint, yeah, reprint. That's gonna be it. Okay, we gotten any farther here? So let's say, so this looks like this part of the word on six could be series, S-E-R-I-E-S. So let's do that, let's put that in there. 
is I think it has to do with series. And let's assume that I'm right here and that this is, we all are collectors. And if you're not, then you definitely should be. So, okay, this could be low series and it fits at least. So low series, we had high series, but oh, and spring. So it's gotta be low series because in the spring, the low number cards were issued. So that's it, I'm pretty sure. Okay, Top's first competition was Bowman back in the 50s. So that's nine across. Okay, so we're doing pretty good here so far. Okay, one type of 1951 Top. So in 51, Tops came out with a few kind of tall boy all-star cards. And they also came out with red back and blue back playing cards. So let's see what 15 gives us. It starts with an R. So I'm going to say this is a red back. They, I mean, they look like playing cards. They had players on them. 1983 test wrapper state. So in 83, Tops issued some of their cards in these kind of mylar type plastic tamper proof wrappers um, and that was issued supposedly at least in Michigan although we had them here in my area in central Indiana as well okay 1980s end of year set so we had what tops traded will that fit t-o-p-p-s-t-r-a-d yep tops traded can't be a coincidence Nineteen seventies Fleer fodder. So Fleer couldn't issue um, single cards of active players pretty much ever until nineteen eighty one. In the sixties, they did kind of the old time players. In the seventies, they issued cartoon depictions of World Series. Crack wax. It's got to be break, I think. Let's see. Soft tobacco insert. So we had cards that were in tobacco products around the turn of the century, but we also had blankets. Little little flannel swatches. B L A N K E T S. So that's a little out of my realm of uh, expertise, but I I have seen some and I do know about them a little bit, so, so I think break will fit there. And 17 across. Alright. So perfect. Mint. Maybe gem mint. G E M. Let's see what 14 down is. Baseball card tweeners. Hmm, what could that be? So, so you figure it's got to end with an S. All right. So at 24 across is Magic Motion Vehicle. So that's Sport Flix. And then let's assume for now that this 19 across is Jim Mint. So yeah, Sportflix was the company that brought out the Magic Motion cards with, you know, three exposures on each card. It was, they were kind of a mess, but we liked them at the time because they were new. Okay, Hoarder's Delight. I'm pretty sure I know what that is. For me, I always kind of lusted after vending cases every spring because you could get 12,000 brand new cards all at once. So you got 24... 500 count vending boxes in the case a searchable strip so that's going to be a rack pack i think yeah because you can see the players front and back it's a strip of cards and you can search through them until you find somebody showing that you like he got his own card set in 1959 that would be ted williams with the aforementioned Fleer, who could not 
issue cards of current players with the exception of Ted because they signed him to an exclusive deal which excluded him from tops. Okay, a serrated border, 21 down. It's going to be a deckle, deckle edge, maybe. I think that's right. Let's see. So the tops had a couple, couple of deckle edge cards. I think seven, 69, maybe 74, 74 for sure. For sure, I think. <laughs> okay, Sarah de Borden. So they were kind of jaggedy, you know. So you had the, the picture here, and then instead of straight edges, you had these kind of jaggedy edges. I have, my artistic abilities have improved a lot over the years. So then you had your, I'll go ahead and finish it off. Your baseball player with his bat. There you go. Um, okay, 1975 test card. So we had minis. So I'm going to say that is a mini. All right. Fresh off the press. 27 across. Ooh, that one's pretty sparse. That's a big long word with not much in the way of help. What was I thinking there? Yeah. Let's think about that a little bit more. Okay. The gum, that's a gun. Oh, that was an easy one for me. Bazooka. My One of my favorite cards ever. And one that I have always admired from afar. I don't think I've ever seen one in person. Is the 59 Bazooka Hank Aaron card. It's just a beautiful shot of him. And rare card. Has a lot going for it. Crossed sports lines for a card. Sure about that one. All right. So Yasm Bench in 1984 Donruss, 25 down. They were on the same card together. It was a great card. I remember pulling it from a pack, and they were living legends. One was on top, one was on bottom. Can't remember who was who. 30 across. There's always room for these. It's going to be Jello cards. There's always room for J E L L O, and there's always room for C A R D S. 29, remove from a sheet. 29 down, that is. So let's see. Remove from a sheet. 29 down. Hand cut, maybe? I think that's right. I kind of remember this clue, so I'm, I'm cheating a little bit. And because I put the hyphen in there. That would be hard. <sighs> However, I have an advantage because I created it. Okay, I'm going to flip over here to just the acrosses so I don't run out of space. Sorry about my... 81 scratch offs there. 1950s tobacco issue. That's going to be Red Man, I think. 32 across. This also gives me some time to think about some of the ones I can remember up above. Where semi stars go to die. That would be the commons bin, I think. You limp the semi-stars along for a few years, hoping that they'll transform into superstars, and when they don't, they usually slide into commons bin. And that gives me an idea about the tweeners, which was, what, 14 down, I think? Yeah, semi-stars, Z-M-I. Yeah, that works. So they are those tweeners that you need to keep tabs on, just in case. Every once in a while you got one that kind of breaks out. All right. Has the most popular rookie card. It's got to be Mickey Mantle. <laughs> if I could draw my L's correctly. 
Nikki, voice for the hobby. Sports Collectors Digest, no doubt about it. Nobody did it better, at least in my years in the hobby. Mad Hungarian in 1982 Fleer. So Al Herbosky, the Mad Hungarian, had a few variations of his card. One or two showed him at five foot one, and one of them showed him as Al instead of Al. I'm sure, he was everything to his family, so that makes sense. Okay, Frank Robinson as a giant. That's going to be like manager card. So that's an example. E.G. Three D grain dust. So who made three D cards? Kellogg's and grain. K E L L O G G S. I'm not sure about the dust part, but it fits. I mean, yes, you would get dust. So I guess that's it. Grain dust. Okay, fancy tops cards, 1980s version. So tops made high gloss, super premium, creamy cardstock. Tiffany cards Conf So confident in that one that I crossed it out before I even looked at the boxes only for diehards before 1974 Set building s-e-t-b-u-i-l-d-i-n-g pretty sure that's right Because um, we had All of these series I'm gonna leave that one because it's a little a little wide the Kleenex of baseball card pricing. Okay, what's the Beckett price on that? How much is, uh, what's the Beckett on it? You can leave the price out. What's the Beckett on that one? So Beckett, the price guide that everybody used as synonymous with just price guide. Upper deck, wrapper innovation. Foil something, foil packs maybe? That fits. I'm going with it. We'll see how it plays out when I come back to the down column. Okay. So I'm going back to get our downs. Most expensive card player. So we will say that Hannes Wagner is still is the subject of the most expensive card, his T206 card. And that fits. And it also gives me an idea about the one crossing over. So let me cross that off. About crossing sports. So 28 cross sports lines for a card. So the most famous sale of a Hannes Wagner card was to Wayne Gretzky. And that looks like it's going to fit. The great one, the great hockey player. And it does fit. So that works. Okay. Scratch and sniff for baseball cards. 33 down. Hmm. Could that be? There's not much in the way of hints there. So what could you scratch and sniff? Something about gum. Gum. G U M. Gum, gum stain? Yeah, I guess that works. Gum stain. So if you have a gum stain on your card, and you scratch it, gum stains, I suppose, then you get an aroma of gum. You could probably taste it, too. Home of plastic baggy wrappers. That has to be score. Yeah, it is. Score, score was not my favorite card brand, but... Again, we kind of like them. All of us kind of like them because they were new and bright. Lots of good colors. And they were another card set. Searchable brick. So this is kind of like searchable stri strip. This would be cello packs. Because, again, you can see cello pack the players on both sides. And you can go through the packs until you find a player showing that you want. Or until you get told to leave wherever you are. 1984 candy parallel. So Topps made a couple of Nestle sets. 
1984 when it was an insert into candy uh, boxes or candy packages and then one was a complete parallel for the the whole 792 card base set so candle wannabes 39 down that must be wax something or other Hmm, it's gonna be something small with wax. Uh, I've seen this pattern before. Stains, wax stains. Similar to gum. Oh, so witty. Candle wannabes. Okay, first card. 43 down. That's gotta be rookie card. Any self-respecting hobbyist knows that. Tops used to be brown and mushy. That's got to be cardstock. I talk about this all the time in articles over on Wax Pack Gods. Everybody used to really gripe about the Tops uh, cardstock and wanted it to be hard and white like the rest of the companies. Eventually they got there. Grading behemoth. When you say baseball card grading, regardless of any Problems that might have come up, you still think, or most people still think, PSA. And that's who fits in our our uh, puzzle here. And then Home of the Diamond Kings, it's got to be Don Russ. I'm getting close now. So even with my heavy inside edge, i still got a couple that I haven't figured out yet. So what do we got? Looks like we got all the down clues done. And then on the across we have fresh off the press. It's gonna be a sheet of some sort. Ah, yes. What kind of sheets do we have in baseball cards? Uncut sheets. A thing of beauty. Okay. And then only for diehards before 1974. So we know from above the low series, the pattern there. So it's not set collecting or whatever, but it is, I believe, high series. So the high series always seemed to be in short supply. It was supply and demand, I guess, because football season was usually underway and by the time the high series came out. And so shell, uh, stores didn't get as many for their shelves. So there you have it. There is my baseball card crossword number one. You can find it um, online at Wax Pack Gods if you want to work it. Although if you've watched to this point, then I guess I've kind of given you all kinds of spoilers. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed and uh, enjoy your collection. Thanks.